Hi, this is John, and welcome back. Today, I'm talking about some of my favorite gym myths. Top five gym myths that I hear most often from clients as well as from people in the gym. I get asked a lot of questions about these top five subjects, and these are both past and present, current day uh, topics. So some of them have been around for pff, since the beginning of time in the gym, and then we also have some of them that are relatively new, as in the last, you know, five, ten years, they've kind of crept up and popped up, and uh, as and are being accepted as the way to go for certain goals. So the first one I have right here is is high reps, lifting for high repetitions with lighter weights will make you cut. Now, this sounds pretty basic, right? I mean, we, we've we've heard this over. Oh man, I'm talking. 50 years, maybe longer, 60, 70 years, lifting lighter weights will definitely, definitely, if you train to failure, they will stimulate your lean muscle mass. I've done a video on that. Lifting lighter weights does build muscle. This has already been a proven fact. So you just have to train to failure. That's the catch. Unfortunately, most people also seem to believe that Training with lighter weights is going to burn more calories. Somehow doing 20 or 25 repetitions with a weight is going to burn twice as many calories as doing a set of 10 repetitions. Now, I don't know the ins and outs as far as those little minutia, as far as the number of calories, but I can tell you this much. The number of calories are going to be pretty small. It's not the number of calories that you're going to burn during that workout that really matters. It's how many you're going to burn by developing new muscle tissue. That's what matters. By building new muscle, you're going to go ahead and you're going to be burning body fat or be burning more calories 24 seven. So lighter, higher repetitions are not going to make you more cut directly. That's not the prerequisite for burning the calories. The idea with the weight training, to get yourself to burn more body fat or to get more cut up is to build more lean muscle mass. And you can do it with lighter weights. It's just not going to happen from doing lighter weights unless you do train to total failure, where you cannot get another clean repetition on your own in good form. So that's train number one, training with high reps and low weight will make you cut up. Number two. Training abs often, with high reps, mind you, will reduce the size of the gut. And also, this is just another fancy way of saying that you'll spot reduce. That you can somehow drop body fat straight off of your gut, but not anywhere else, by training more often and with higher repetitions on the abdominal area. Which, again, can be turned into a little mini aerobic session. Got to tell you something, there, there's definitely a case to be made for going ahead and, you know, there have been bodybuilders back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s who did train abdominals for an hour at a shot, half an hour at a shot with, you know, Roman chair sit-ups, certain abdominal exercises, and they would just keep on going and keep on going. Back then, they, they had to rely on the exercise in the gym to burn a lot of their calories, but also... Uh, when it would become contest time, they'd have to go ahead and reduce their calories, reduce their carbs most of the time, and then go ahead and double that up by doing a ton of abdominal work as extra exercise. So in that case, it did, in their cases, they would do practically an entire workout. I've heard stories of Frank Zane training his abdominals for hour, you know, literally 45 minutes or an hour at a shot and that he would do pre-contest almost every day. So that was kind of the norm for back then. But since that time, uh, we have way more knowledge as far as the diet, how to manipulate your diet to reduce body fat levels and therefore reduce your gut. So doing your abdominals or training your abdominals for hours on end or doing them with very light weights and high, high repetitions Doing a set of 100 repetitions on abdominals does not magically delicious go and burn off a ton of body fat, specifically from your abdominals. 
There is no such thing as spot reducing to any major degree. I know there have been some studies out there that have been done in the last, I think it's only one study that's been done in the last uh, 10 or 20 years that did prove that in fact there was a fractional reduction in the thickness of the skin when individuals trained a certain body part, I think it was their thighs they trained, on one thigh, training it with very, very high repetitions for up to 10 minutes at a time, and then not training the other one in the same fashion. The skin fold on the thigh that was trained for 10 minutes did in fact become reduced. But I'm talking about minimally, so minimal, that it's undetectable with the eye. So therefore, that's why I still call this a myth. If we can't see it with our eyes, it's a freaking myth. That's all there is to it. So now, number three, uh, the keto or the ketogenic diet is the number one way to lose body fat and build muscle. Wow, wow, gotta tell you. The objective of the ketogenic diet is to uh, reduce carbohydrate intake to such a level where your body is forced to rely on fats, dietary fats, as well as uh, you know, from stored fat cells, you know, fatty acids for fuel. So this is a good thing, it sounds like, right? And I agree, in cases it is. The bodybuilders back in the 70s and the 60s and the 80s, all of those decades, they did prove that you can drop major amounts of body fat when you are on a low carbohydrate, zero, you know, low to zero carbohydrate diet and rely on your fats and your proteins for energy and fuel and material to rebuild. And then of course have some salads occasionally, so that, you know, you can get a little bit of fiber in there. Uh, they did prove back then that in fact, you will burn body fat. Now, is it the best way to build muscle? Well, they also knew back in the 70s and the 80s, they knew that uh, once a week, sometimes even twice a week, they'd have to bump up those carbohydrates. Why is that? Well, it did fend off the cravings for the carbohydrates, but it also allowed their metabolism to kick into gear and not die off and go down to a very low flame. So the problem was, if they stayed on their low carbohydrate diet for too long, their body would resist giving up body fat after too long of a period, and also it would start chewing up its own lean muscle mass. That's the problem. When you do ketogenic diet all the time, you're gonna chew up lean muscle mass. So you have to raise up those carbohydrates periodically, and then you could do a ketogenic diet for you know six out of seven days a week, and in some cases, if you have a great metabolism, five out of seven days a week, and maybe raise up those carbohydrates uh, for one or two days a week. So the bodybuilders had it right back in the 70s. I mean, they were the real lab rats for the rest of us uh, you know, now 30, uh, 40, 50 years later. So we know better. So you can definitely do a ketogenic diet. Is it number one? Not all the time. You don't need to do that all the time. Is it a great way to lose body fat? Absolutely it is. Is it a great way to build muscle mass? Whoa, very debatable. Very debatable. Doing both of those things at the same time, I'm just looking at empirical evidence. Every person, every male, that I see in the gym who's specifically doing a ketogenic diet, uh, their muscle mass sucks. Sorry, I'm just telling the truth. Their muscle mass, what they used to look like, uh, was much bigger when they were eating carbohydrates. And maybe they were a little bit smoother, but they gave up so much muscle mass in the name of getting ripped on that diet that they obsess about being ripped and they obsess about not eating their carbohydrates. So therefore, their bodies have dug deep down, too deep into their glycogen and into the actual muscle tissue itself and chewed it up and used it for energy. So a lot of them have reduced muscle mass. That's just the fact, it's just what I see with my own eyes in the gym, just strictly empirical evidence that I see. Maybe there are some people out there who have not lost their muscle mass, but for the most part, I don't see them. I don't see them at all. And I'm talking about uh, mainly people who are not using steroids or hormones to enhance their lean muscle mass. But even they still up their carbohydrates once a week or twice a week to maintain that lean muscle mass that they have or even gain a little muscle mass. So drugs, no drugs, doesn't much matter. You still have to eat a little bit of carbs if you're interested in maintaining or gaining your lean muscle mass. All right, <clears throat> number four, the myth 
of the hard gainer. The hard gainer is that trainee whose body refuses to, no matter what they do in the gym, they cannot gain any muscle. No matter what they do when they're on their diet, their body just stubbornly refuses to give up body fat. Well, in either case, again, uh, empirical ev evidence shows that uh, those same hard gainers, they certainly don't eat enough, don't eat often enough, uh, absolutely don't train hard enough. Combine all three of those and you have what's called a hard gainer. So anybody who trains hard enough, eats enough, they're going to gain some lean muscle mass. Uh, it's very rare. I mean, on, on the spectrum, on the bell curve, you have some you know, people out here on the ends, and it's very rare that you have one of these people way out here that is such a hard gainer. Uh, Mike Mentzer used to call them an albino of being able to grow muscle mass. And then all the way at this end, you have the freaks who pretty much walk around looking like a pro bodybuilder all the time, but don't hardly lift any weights, or if ever lift weights. They're just born with this great physique. The rest of us seem to fall in the middle of the bell curve. So the albinos, the hard gainers, uh, those guys, I'm sorry, but I have yet to see any of them training hard enough, eating enough, eating often enough. When you examine their diets alone, you come to find out that they really are only eating two or three big meals a day. Uh, plenty of calories in those meals, but it's just not enough, uh, often enough, for them to actually absorb those meals. They're eating too much at one time, usually too high of a fat content and usually too high of a junk food content. So if it's burgers and fries at lunch, sorry, you know, you're not going to want to eat anything for five, six hours until dinner time. And during that time, you should have had another meal. The fat content is just too high on that type of a meal. So uh, pizza for lunch or pizza, you know, uh, in the middle of the day, obviously it's too high of a fat content if you're doing that regularly to be able to justify getting in another meal before you eat dinner. Proven formula, six meals a day, eat a fairly high amount of carbohydrates, protein and fats, and but not so, so sky high on the fats. And you will be able to eat six meals per day, and you will be able to eat a decent amount of protein, carbs, and some fats all throughout your day, feeding those muscles once you stimulate that lean muscle mass with a high intensity weight training program. So, uh, sorry, the hard gainer that's trying to gain muscle mass, really not true. Very, very freakishly rare. So 99% of them, not true. Just not eating enough, not training hard enough. The hard gainer who cannot lose body fat, that client, oh man, I've had many of them over the years, just stubbornly cannot lose body fat. Their body likes to stay at this certain body weight, but it refuses to give up body fat. I mean, <laughs> I laugh at those guys. Because again, when we track their diet and see what they're actually doing, not what I told them to do or they think that they're doing, but what they are actually doing, you find out that they're not following their diet plan properly and they're not uh, reducing their calories far enough to lose body fat. And they're doing a lot of cheating or they're eyeballing their foods. You can't eyeball your foods when you're on a diet. It doesn't work that way. Very few people in the world have gotten away with that. The majority of people have to weigh their food. That's a simple fact. You got to know how much fuel is going in, inside that body of yours. Just like you have to know how much gasoline is going inside the tank of your car. You would never drive a cross country or uh, you know up the US 101 in California along those cliff sides. You would never drive along those cliff sides on, oh, about a full tank of gas. About is not good enough. You run out of gas up there, you're screwed. So basically, th with the same idea in mind, you need to feed your body enough and fuel that tank throughout the day. You need to know how much you're putting in there as well if you're on a fat reduction diet plan. So there is no such thing. The people whose bodies are stubborn at losing body fat, it's not their bodies, it's their minds are being stubborn and untruthful with themselves and their trainers. So that myth, out the door. Last one, number five, eating healthy will get you in top condition. Man, I love this one. I love this one. Because when I have clients who come on in and you know they've been instructed 
to eat certain great foods, but also I took the time to outline for them the amounts of food that they should eat for each meal. Oh, five ounces of lean beef or lean chicken or lean turkey, whatever it is at a certain meal. And later on, when I interview them and ask them how their progress is going, or we weigh them or we measure them, whatever the case is, and we see that they're not making progress, when I ask them, how are you eating? And, and it always ends up this way. They all say, oh, I'm doing the diet. They say they're doing the diet. Okay, and I say, great. So what'd you eat yesterday? So I expect if they've done their diet, they gotta be quick about knowing that they had a half a cup of oatmeal, two eggs, right? That, that was their breakfast. And oh, and one little piece of fruit. Or they had five ounces of chicken at lunch, you know, five ounces of turkey with, you know, two cups of vegetables with, ah, one ounce of nuts. They should know the amounts. But when all of a sudden I ask them, what did you have for breakfast yesterday? And they say to me, oatmeal. Wow, let me roll my eyes. Shh. Wow, 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 wow. This is the most common answer that I've gotten over the years. What did you have for breakfast? Oatmeal. That's not an answer as far as, you know, you're answering your trainer, the guy who wrote your diet for you, broke it down for you, told you if you were having oatmeal, he told you also how much oatmeal. That's a cup of oatmeal prior to cooking. That's a half a cup prior to cooking. And then go ahead and cook it. Now you should be able to recite to me, I had two eggs, I had one half cup of oatmeal, and I had one piece of fruit. Simple enough, right? So when they can't recite that type of a diet back at me, I know they're not following the plan. So usually, when they do describe what they did eat yesterday, and they tell me, you know, they, they stopped at Jamba Juice and they got a juice drink because they didn't have time to eat breakfast. And, but they got that scoop of protein powder in it, okay? And, and I say, wait a second, you had this gigantic Jamba Juice drink. And they go, yeah, it's healthy. And I go, oh man, healthy means nothing right there. We're talking about body composition change. A Jamba Juice drink is a pile of fruit mixed into a blender along with a scoop of protein powder. What we're talking about right there is so much fruit, you would never, and then there's usually fruit juice mixed in there too, you would never eat that much fruit at one sitting. So therefore, you shouldn't blend it and drink it. No, I don't believe in blending. That's just me. And also for when I have clients who want to alter their body composition to reduce body fat or gain lean muscle mass. Juicing is not in the formula, so that's my bottom line. So eating healthy uh, does not get you in top condition. When all of a sudden I have my clients tell me they went out to dinner last night and they were supposed to have five ounces of lean beef and a giant trough of salad, a trough, I call it a trough, a huge bowl uh, of salad with maybe some olive oil on it or some cod liver oil, I like lemon flavored cod liver, cod liver oil on our salads, but they do that with all the green vegetables they can handle, pretty much unlimited in my world as far as the green vegetables, but throwing a tablespoon of olive oil on there makes it a little oily and gives us some taste. Salt, pepper, boom, you're set. But when they tell me they went out last night and they ate uh, sushi and they tell me it was healthy, I go, man, wait a second, wait a second. They have no idea how many calories they took in. They have no idea that they just bumped up their carbohydrates at that, at that last meal of the day so high that it was not even on the plan that I wrote for them. So my bottom line is, is no, eating healthy, while it is healthy and better than eating junk food all day long, no doubt it is more healthy and you'll probably test out great when you go to have a physical with your physician, blood work will probably look great and everything. The negative to that is, is you can't expect to get in top shape when you're just simply eating healthy, okay? So that's my bottom line. Top five myths for today. That's it for today. From my heart to you, a little conversation about some of the myths. I had to write them down when I was at the gym, when I all of a sudden I was having a great conversation with clients and then also with some other trainers. So that's it. Top five myths that I hear in the gym on a regular basis. From my heart to you, John Hart. Can't wait to see you again. Hey, before you leave, please, why don't you smack that thumbs up button over there on your left. 
and the subscribe button on the right if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I've got a lot of good videos coming your way.